checking out this abandoned house. It's actually for sale. Check it out, man. Man, this thing needs this house needs to be demolished. Look at that. That's really awesome back here though. Check this out. The heck is that, man? But hey guys. I've been talking about the next motorcycle I want to get and you know I've talked crap about the Euro motorcycles out there and uh, but you know what maybe cycle cruiser should own a European motorcycle let's go for a ride you are watching cycle cruisers all on one motorcycle channel subscribe today always bring a spare key with you man because <laughs> i was messing around looking at this house i pulled my key out and i was fumbling with my gloves and i dropped it in the grass and i said oh man please don't let me be stranded out here <laughs> what did i do with my key man it must have fell out of my hand why did i just leave it in there why did i do that oh thank you jesus but thank God I, I prayed. I said, dear God, please don't let me be stranded out here. <laughs> and then I, I saw it glimmering out, out of the gla uh, grass. Oh, man, let me get out of here. Out here in the middle of nowhere. Out here in the country. <laughs> but you know what, guys? I was thinking about just completely fooling all of you guys for my next bike and just like man just get a straight up European bike and just uh, throw you guys all off because most of you guys probably think I you know I don't like European motorcycles them European bitches, they're out for your wallet baby I got to pay double the maintenance cost for for the part prices and parts are harder to come by what am I getting with those European bikes? Not that I don't like them. It's I feel that they're not as reliable as the Japanese motorcycles. It's more expensive. Parts are more expensive. And, uh, but you know what? I said, heck, man, I need, to, I need to get out of my comfort zone with these Japanese bikes that are so awesome and reliable. And maybe go ahead and get that European motorcycle so I can share the experience with you guys. I actually thought about buying a Ducati, a f***ing Ducati Panigale. You got a f***ing Ducati. You got to say it like that, a f***ing Ducati. But then I went to the Ducati, uh, I even called around, got some got some prices. How much are you selling it for? Uh, it's going for $22,995. Okay, what could you give me cash out the door on that bike? Yeah, that, that's pretty much going at that price, the, the regular pricing there just isn't any of them out there yet um uh out the door on that bike you're looking at about 27.2 and i i went to the ducati forum ducati Panigal forum and i asked guys you know hey should i get this bike i'm used to only riding japanese bikes tell me what's up with the ducati 1299 everybody tells me you know, if you have to ask, then it's probably not a bike for you. <laughs> but people, a lot of people experience some problems with that bike. I mean, they the display on the bike, people are complaining about the pixels going out. Guy said that uh, luckily it was under warranty or it would have been like 30% of the price of the bike. It, I mean, because you know, the parts are so expensive with, with Ducati parts, very expensive. But uh, also... Uh, some type of fluid leaks. I don't know. They had some cooling issues. One guy, as soon as he bought it, brand new, right off the jump. Uh, another guy had some, just a bunch of different little knick-knack problems, man. And it, it scared me away from, uh, you know, getting a, mo a Ducati motorcycle. I just hear so many problems with it. You know, people reporting problems, and they're so expensive. I didn't mind paying the extra price for something unique and cool. I love the looks of their bikes. Absolutely sick. The, the Cotty 1299 is the most beautiful 
that design is in my opinion the most beautiful sport bike out there period bar none gorgeous and I wanted to buy it just for that and also for its experience the engine on the bike just the total Ducati experience to share with you guys and I, I figured, hey, a little nick, you know, a few knick-knack problems here and there. Okay, I could deal with it. Deal, you know, as long keep the bike on, you know, as long as I it's in warranty. And then when it's out of warranty, get rid of the bike. Or uh, when it's due for a valve adjustment. <laughs> you know? Like so many guys do, which I probably do that too. I have yet to do a valve adjustment on the bike. I usually get rid of the bike before it's due for a valve adjustment. I don't think I'll do that with this bike though. Like I said, I think this bike is a keeper. But I figure, man, I, at some point I have to own a European motorcycle, guys. I, and I thought about the Prilia, like I said, the Tuano, everybody praises the bike. But I hear problems with that bike as far as stalling issues or over, excuse me, overheating issues with the bike. Um, but then when it comes to Triumph, uh, I hardly hear anybody complain about any problems with the Triumphs. Um, I just wish they made a prettier speed triple. You know, if they got rid of that stupid two bug-eyed headlight design and, and made it sleeker looking, which they probably won't do because that's not... They're not known for their pretty designs. Even the Triumph Daytona 675R is not a pretty bike. It's an ugly bike. It used to be it used to be pretty cool looking with the past designs but this the newer one just looks goofy to me it just doesn't look right i don't know just at beauty's in the eye of the beholder but everybody loves the triple cylinder engine on the bike everybody praises the speed triple and i don't doubt that but uh i need to own a european bike at some point man i don't know I just need to get out of my comfort zone with something just to change it up I, I just got it too easy too good with these Japanese especially the Hondas and and Yamaha no problems at all with this bike it's just butter smooth no vibrations no leaks no none of those little knickknacks stupid problems that you see on you hear people experiencing with the Ducati and, and the other European bikes that's why these I, it does I don't understand why these bikes don't hold their resale value better I'll tell you because uh, they're so reliable you know Woo! not that power <laughs> I don't know guys I know you guys clown on me about me talking about getting another bike and you don't want to hear it and this and that and I keep saying I want a sick bike for my next bike man and I'm just having a, a, a tough time trying to choose there's so many sick bikes I'm not getting rid of this bike though uh, I'm gonna add the third bike I may shock you guys and just come out with something totally which you throw a curveball to you guys completely shock you I don't know guys share your thoughts in the comments but anyways, if you want to get my gear, I know you guys asked me about my, my jacket, gloves, you know, my camel pants. Check it out, I got high-vis camel pants, a boots, helmet, my cameras. I include links to my gear in the description and comment section of this video. Or you can go to my website at cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab, my gear. And uh, there's links to all of my gear there. Or if you want to see more of my videos at my website, click on the menu tab, my videos. And all my video, all my thousand plus videos are categorized into various playlists to make it easier for you to navigate through. I appreciate all you guys. Hey, hit thumbs up if you like this video. If you, please hit thumbs up because it helps me get motivated to do more videos. And it helps my channel out. I appreciate all you guys. Hey, subscribe to my all-in-one motorcycle channel. I wish you guys all the best out there. I'll catch you guys later. Drop a gear, disappear. Deuces! Hey, don't forget to check out my other YouTube channel that features the original Bug Out Moto van that is designed and built by yours truly so that I can live in my van with my motorcycle. So hey, check me out at youtube.com forward slash Bug Out Moto. 
subscribe today.